Okay. Hi, and welcome to my Facebook Live. This is Saturday, and today it's more casual. Um, today's talk is a continuing conversation um, in my ongoing series of messages from the masculine. It's number 72 in the series. Still blown away by that. Um, but content keeps coming. And in fact, today's topic was inspired and um, birthed from one of my viewers. <laughs> Let's see, one of my viewers called in with a question. Let's put it that way. Uh, actually, Facebook Messenger. So, in case you're thinking about ideas you want questions answered on, feel free to message me over Facebook or if you're on YouTube, message me there. So, message me there. I'll put in a comment and I'll uh, see what I can come up with. This one today is basically about monogamy versus polyamory. And the context. I won't share any details, but this I've heard not just once before. So the title basically is monogamy, or is one not enough? And the reason I said that is because there's a lot of perspective, debate, and difference of opinion between monogamy and polyamory. Um, if you've been watching my broadcast, which I trust you have, I do a lot of conversation about masculine feminine polarity and relationships and all those sort of things. And you probably guessed by the thematic I go with, I'm more of a bias towards monogamy. And so I'm speaking from that side of the fence. I've not, in, I've not participated in polyamory, and to be honest, I'm not attracted to it. It's not a, it's not a, a religious thing, it's not a um, rule thing, or, a, or any, sort of st any other standpoint. It's more about perspective. So I want to share from my perspective, which is biased, yes, towards monogamy, some thoughts about the polarity opposites and the possibility of relationships that are singular or multiple and hopefully give you some food for thought i don't have the definitive definitive answers i do not claim for that um as i was reading to a friend of mine earlier um we're all on this growing journey any expert who says i know that is not an expert <laughs> i know some things but i also am learning things along the way too so this is perspective and it's i say saturday so it's one of the casual wear um, I'm actually heading up to a friend's birthday party shortly, so I want to get this complete fairly briefly. Um, my broadcast is usually about 10 minutes, which is fine, so you get a chance to get a taste, an answer, some suggestions, and then sign off. So, for those of you just joining me, quick recap, my name is Barry Selby, I am a best-selling author, speaker, and guide about relationships, about feminine leadership. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also... Um, a champion for authentic masculinity. Speaking of being a gentleman and those sort of things too. None of which are really relevant to today's topic necessarily. Although if you watch my last three broadcasts, 69, 70, 71, I talked a lot about the masculine, the next evolution of masculine, next evolution of feminine, and how to be in each. So I recommend watching those three broadcasts in particular. They're getting some traction now. So today's topic is a shift into the conversation about masculine, sorry, about monogamy versus polyamory. So let me break it down first about what I mean by that, because some of you are going, does that mean marriage? Does that mean something else? No, let me give you my, my two cents worth. Um, I like seeing friends of mine in the broadcast. I'm actually waiting for one of my friends to show up who posed this question in the first place. So, monogamy versus polyamory. This is not about marriage. This is not about families, necessarily. It's about the idea of having a committed relationship with one person or a committed relationship with multiple people. That's the way I view it. Now again, this is my perspective, not necessarily the way it is in the dictionary or the rule book or anything else. This is Barry Selby's opinion, and you can take it or leave it. <laughs> As I said earlier, my, my bias is towards monogamy since that's what I've found most, for me, works. But in, I'll talk about it from the point of view of what I believe why monogamy is more suitable versus polyamory for those people who are committed to the deep journey. Because this is not about the rules of society. I don't subscribe to what some rules are because some are biased. And since we only now finally come around to the fact that it's okay to have gay relationships or gay couples get married and other things, I'm thinking we're way behind the times. So my perspective is my perspective. I think we're clear now. I said that 17 times. I think we're clear. So my perspective on true deep relationship is a journey that is a lifetime path. At least it can be, um, depending where you start, of course. But the reality for me in relationship is that there's always more to discover. In fact, in one of the chapters in my book, I talk about how the power of relationship is always discovering new things about your partner. The reason why relationships end a lot of times is because the partners get bored. And that actually is why I believe some people, not all people, choose polyamory because they want to keep like 
refreshing themselves and feeling more inspired. Some people state, state that they have so much love to give they have to be with multiple people. I was going to call bullshit, but I won't. But I am going to speak to the point of view that there's a distinct assumption there, which is that their partner they're with can't handle all the love that this person can give, which is bullshit. Sorry. If you're up with a partner who can't take all the love you provide, I would highly recommend you find another partner. You don't have to find multiples. I don't believe any person on the planet has too much love that one other person can't receive all of it. Obviously, there are things we do with love, such as service in the world, that is beyond relationship. But romantically speaking, or sexually speaking, if you're with a partner who cannot match you where you are, you may want to seek a different partner. Not an additional partner, but a different partner. And this is kind of the crux of my message, passion, desire, intention to have you understand why I believe monogamy has more impact and more available depth to it than polyamory does. I also said in my, in my book about how there's only so much time you have to be able to express on the planet. And with one person, we are infinite beings. Oh, I just threw a big one on you right there. Spiritually speaking, we are beyond just this three-dimensional package. So to explore with one person the depth of possibility, as I said before, unless you get bored, there's always more to discover. It's not possible with a 24-hour day to do that with more than two or three people. It's actually not possible to do it with more than one person. So to do polyamory is to exclude some of your available depth with another partner. And I personally believe that unless you want to just play at a level that is only so deep, you can't do it poly in a polyamorous format. You've got to do it one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to go deeper than that, you've got to commit to one-on-one. -on -one. It's that simple. Um, because depth is something that is explored. Because we all have our own masks and shells and walls to knock down and, and grow through to go deep with somebody else. The true power of a relationship is to grow together, but also to unpack what came before to be free to love fully. Now that is a big ideal to have in a relationship. For many people, that's not even touched upon. But I believe that when you can do that with somebody and have an incredibly um, expansive and deep, intimate connection that transcends all the senses and everything beyond, that's a lifelong journey. If you do that instantly with somebody, awesome. But I personally believe that monogamy for me is a vehicle which works best for a really committed relationship. The other part I talked about, you know, I talked about this in number 68, 69, 69, about the power of the evolved relationship, which is ultimately the woman who steps into the queen, I called it um, queen, priestess, warrior, and the, the man who's in the warrior king. There's an evolution of that level where the two partners together are so matched and so evolving together that frankly you can't have two kings and a queen or two queens and a king it doesn't work together that way energetically in that polarity and this is another piece about the relationship conversation is that the masculine feminine polarity is what keeps two people together polyamory splits the energy up i believe and again this is all about my belief i'm not saying it's right wrong some people from them them polyamory works but it's not in my book literally and figuratively <laughs> In my, well, in my book, I talk about polyamory as an option, but I'm, I talk about monogamy as being the true depth of what's possible. So I'm, I guess I'm hammering this point home pretty firmly of where I stand on this. Um, if you are in a committed relationship with somebody and you say to them that I'm here to provide you fulfillment on all levels, emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, sexual, energetically, all different levels, and then say to them, and by the way, I'm going to go see someone, see someone else as well, you're lying. It's not possible. I don't believe that you can give that much, so much to one person that you are totally used up. Because if you're totally used up, how do you have energy for anybody else? I mean, this is, this is the dichotomy. Now, maybe someone's going to enlighten me with a way of doing polyamory in a way that I've never heard before. And I have friends of mine that do, are in polyamorous relationships. They do have what they call sex-positive relationships. And for them, that works. I don't judge it. I don't subscribe to it. It's that simple. If you're watching my broadcast, you probably are well, someone who generally leans into the monogamous direction because that's what I speak about more. Not necessarily overtly, but in context, that's what I'm talking about. So to wrap this up in a little bow, as it were, to summarize this, the availability of an amazing relationship with one person is truly, I believe, the highest level of commitment and the highest level of connectivity that can happen. 
you can have love with many, many people that is platonic. I don't know, platonic is not when it's the right word. It's maybe unconditional. That can spread with multiple people. I have many people in my life I love dearly, but I don't feel I want to have sex with all of them. I don't feel I want to have a romantic relationship with all of them either. That I reserve for one person. To be honest, and this is my, <laughs> my mind working here, to be in a romantic relationship with one person is a lot easier than trying to keep track of what you said to who and which and when. If you're in a relationship with three different people and you talk about conversation number one, how do you remember what you said to number two, what you didn't say to number one, and then number three and number... Uh, maybe some people can do that. I, me, this guy, I'd rather stick to one. I, I'm having hard enough time to remember what I said to my friends because I said that to somebody and went, oh, I said that to somebody else. Did I tell you that? So monogamy is easier. <laughs> Just on, a, just on a tracking view conversation level, let alone on the whole polarity piece. Now, one little piece I'll add into this, as I've read quite a few articles about this, that some people know about, some people subscribe to, some people don't. It's about the energy of sexual connection. The energy of a sexual connection, particularly for women, is they take on, um, well, this whole thing about, um, what's the word looking for? It, um, disembodied beings and stuff, which is a whole other piece of the stuff on the outside, but I'm just talking about energetically, if you're in a relationship with somebody and you're in the sexual relationship with them, you take on their energy. There's a whole thing that's been written in articles about this where women take on energetically partial relationship karma from their boyfriends if they don't clear it out, which means that's inherited crap. So in a monogamous relationship, ideally you clear that out and become really um, committed to being clean with each other. If you're with multiple people at the same time, in a polyamorous format. I don't know if you can keep track of that. It's not something I believe, if you go truly deep and you're working spiritually, that it's possible to maintain that in a healthy way. From my perspective. Um, I think that's it. I mean, I was just like downloading lots of stuff that's coming up for me, and, and uh, this is really a stand for monogamy, maybe. It's certainly not a um, um, an againstness for polyamory. I'm speaking it from my own perspective, what I believe is most available, most effective, and truly the ideal way to grow deeper in love and clearing your blocks is with one person. So I think monogamy is good for your health. <laughs> that's a logical leap in my mind. Hopefully you can keep up with that. Um, that's really the, the one I want to say today. I'm keeping it brief because I have a friend's birthday party to go to. Um, this is my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. These are Messages from the Masculine. This is number 72, an ongoing series. I have all of my previous ones saved on my website. Um, if you go to barryselby.com, my website, look at the video blog. From one all the way up to number 71 is up there, and this one will be there shortly. Um, I do broadcast every day, and I'm basically here to serve the feminine mostly, but I'm also here to inspire the masculine as well. So if you know anybody should watch this and get value from this, please share this with them. They'll get value. If you're just joining the broadcast, please watch it from the beginning. I'm signing off right now. Timing. Um, and share it with your friends. This might speak to somebody who you know who needs to hear this. And, uh, and you're very welcome. All right, so that's me. I'm signing off. And again, if you want to watch my previous ones, if you go to my business page, by the way, which is Barry Selby with the blue shirt on in the profile picture, all my Facebook lives are stored there as well. And you can comment on any of those and share them out as well. All right, so thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, which will be number 73. Yes, I'm doing data broadcasts. It's, it's accumulating pretty fast. And um, as always, I wish you well and take care of yourselves. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.